Besides food and water, children also need a balance of love and discipline and a stable and safe living environment along with a predictable routine so that they can structure themselves as they age. Failure to provide such a shelter to your offspring can result in developmental issues down the line, some being as severe as lifelong mental health disorders that will be plaguing them for the rest of their existence. While chemical imbalances in the brain play a huge role in this condition, the impact that neglect has on its operation cannot be understated. Even within neurotypical subgroups, the burden of a broken childhood has all the potential to push otherwise mentally healthy individuals into a depressed state, and one that can last as long as the painful memories keep hold. It might be surprising to some to hear that this state of imbalance I just described fits the early life of Baki Anma to a T. Born to a mother that gave him to the wood as an offering for future consumption, and raised by the man destined to devour him, his existence was cursed from the start. Stolen from the already cold arms of the woman that was supposed to protect him from danger, he spent his formative years being tyrannized by his psychopath of a father, an individual whose sadism only equaled the blatant disregard he showed for the emotional and physical safety of his child. Worse yet, this transgressive education was purposeful, with the intent of turning Baki into a father at the youngest age possible, ingraining in him traumas that would prematurely separate him from his innocence. Besides being forced to witness his father decimate entire dojos, he was also exposed to death and gore as a daily occurrence, for example when he was forced to collect the blood of a recently diseased deer into a bucket. This activity would be enough to terrorize any kids, but must have been especially poignant for Baki considering how much he loves animals, which is a fact that Yujiro is perfectly aware of and uses to torture his son, who he considers to be too nice. These psychological mistreatments, on top of exposing an impressionable youngster to the horrors of violence during his developmental years, which should be characterized by warm guidance and reassurance, also participate in making him fear his father, who should be a comforting presence in his life. During his early age, a child has to know that his parent will be there to protect him. Here, with the authority figure becoming the main threat to survival, the opposite is true. The first memories of a child, that should be filled with nothing but games, cuddles and afternoon snacks, have become corrupted. Considering that we mainly construct ourselves via interactions with our environment, the fate of a little boy whose only context for an identity was tainted by a rough and unforgiving upbringing is nothing short of grim. And indeed, the life of Bakianma after this point turned out to be focused around combat walking the exact path that his unloving parents had selected for him at birth. While there was enjoyment to be found in that endeavor, it is clear that his very pursuit of martial arts was impure. It sounds evident, since this drive to become the strongest was forced onto him from a young age. But on top of lacking a personal goal, he was also not pursuing the one that got assigned to him in earnest. At this point in the story, Baki had no interest in fulfilling his destiny in battle. All he wanted and all he cared about was to receive the affection that his mother always deprived him of. Having realized that petitioning his old man for a tender gesture was as likely to succeed as trying to jump to Jupiter, he focused all his efforts on the woman that gave him life. This maternal love that should have been a given becomes a bargaining chip that this prodigal son is trying to secure. His questioning and the vacant stare that accompanies it translates deep emotional distress, while also conveying the monstrous reality that Baki intimately knows, but refuses to accept. That his mother has given all her love to Yujiro, and has none left to spare for him, regardless of the outcome of their fight. After this bitter realization, he would wander the streets of Tokyo, alone in a wood deserted of the most sacred of bonds, the one between a mother and her child. Surrounded by bright lights and the pearly laughter of people who never had to hunt their hugs by facing a demon, he stumbles upon his best friend, Anayama Kaoru. Upon noticing the bite mark, the Yakuza decides to bring Baki home, to a place where his solitude wouldn't be contrasted by the ferocious joys of nightlife. This is the moment when our dejected antagonist 
his eyes still denoting the dissociation he went through when his hopes were dashed, clearly exposes the thought that has been haunting him his entire existence. In truth, he doesn't really want to live. All he has done so far was for the sake of one day being loved by his mother, and since that isn't an option anymore, he has no reason to keep going. This was not said in an effort to fish for attention or garner pity from his friend. It was the simple expression of a reality that had been plaguing him for a long time, and the first time that Baki would verbalize his depression to himself or others. Anayama, understanding that a reality check was needed, let him know that his only parent had passed away, and that he can't help but feel jealous of a relationship he will never get to experience again. After a night of talking, the spirit of our hero is revigorated. As long as his mother is alive, so is the chance of convincing her to love him. Said chance isn't the possibility of beating the ogre, but rather the opportunity for Baki to finally win the affection he yearned for his entire life. This realization hits especially hard because of Anayama's story, who recently lost his mother which reminds his friend to focus on the things he can accomplish, rather than to brood over do's that he can't change. This true finality of Baki's fighting drive doesn't take away from the pure joy he experiences when pinning his strength against an opponent. While he was indeed groomed by destiny to face the strongest creature on earth, the challenges he encountered on the way were not marked by the same cold fatality that this encounter with his father would take. While the destination itself fills him with dread and was ultimately the reason for his depressive state, as it deprived him of any parental love, the journey of self-improvement it triggered would not be tainted by the same feeling of impending doom. This childlike appreciation for combat would become back his saving grace, and ironically also the reason why he was able to meet and befriend a number of people that would ultimately become his real family. Depression, it seems, often takes the form of a bottomless pit of despair, the depth of which rays of light cannot reach. You climb and you climb trying to escape, but in the end, the walls are too slick and the sun too far. And so you end up back where you started. In this situation, a friendly hand can make all the difference, and offer you the boost you need to not only extirpate yourself from the accursed well, but also to durably stay out of it. This is the type of support that Anayama provided Baki with, and the resounding energy that emanates from the friendships the young man has made on his journey to become a better fighter. Sometimes, our blood relatives end up being like strangers to us. Even then, it is hard to cut ties with those who should be our closest allies. But that process is facilitated by the constitution of a surrogate family, especially when its members end up treating you the way you wished your biological kin would. Baki is first and foremost kind and empathic, a fact that Endosan understands and respects, accepting the young boy for who he is, regardless of his compatibility. It is when friends are good to you that mistreatments become obvious, and building up the confidence to be yourself is much easier when those that count for you encourage such a behavior. Ultimately, Baki's yearning for his mother's love would prove to be too crucial to pass up on, which will lead to this state of delusion of his that will get triggered by her death at the ends of Yujiro, an event that I will be covering in another video. Having sacrificed her life to save her son, she finally gave him the unconditional love and protection that is expected of a mother. However, it would be the first and last time that Baki would experience this bond, a harsh truth that the young man was simply not ready to face at this stage of his development. The rekindling of their mother-son relationship, which he had envisioned in his mind as the definitive cure to his depressive state, was taken away from him in the span of a night. Mad with grief, he simply couldn't envision a scenario in which the feeling of sorrow he felt in his chest would ever disappear having lost the key to his happiness's door. This mindset, of course, is the reason for his misery. The depressive mind exists in an ever-evolving state of exploration, 
always seeking for external reasons to explain its plight. The answer, as is often the case in self-improvement, is found within. If the spirit is sick, then what needs to change is the spirit itself, not the world around it. By constantly trying to invoke situational factors to explain internal struggles, you are left in an endless spiral of self-pitying which can only be broken by the realization that the change will have to come from you. Master the inside and the outside will be modified in front of your very eyes. This was the lesson that took Baki out of this destructive cycle and one that he finally grasped after much self-contemplation and woke. His mother had died to give him a chance to live, not just as a foil for Yujiro Anma, but as his own person. Had he won her love by defeating the ogre, he would have lost his one goal, which would have done nothing to help him develop his individuality. While beating his father would still remain a crucial objective of his, the one-track mind that he demonstrated before the tragedy would slowly make way for a more joyous and impulsive outtake on life and combat in general. Realizing that the only way to lead a fulfilling existence is to follow your own path with an exuberant and unashamed heart, our hero would go through a renaissance of sort, a tale that I can't wait to share with you next, when I will be discussing the glow-up of Bakianma, a story that I hope will help you kick your depression for good. <laughs>